Hello, everyone. Welcome to day four of the Reconnect to Your Conscience Challenge. So to recap, we went over again, kind of the introduction to meditation and mindfulness. We went over a few different breathing exercises that you can do um, to find grounding or centering. We also talked about a few different cognitive behavior therapy tools and challenging common thinking patterns. And today we're going to explore a little bit more meditation, a little bit more um, loving kindness, specifically meditation. And so I thought I would just kind of give you a little information above beforehand. So the original name is Metta Bhavana, or also known as a loving kindness meditation. Metta is meaning universal love and kindness, and bhavana can represent becoming or cultivating this. It originates from Buddhist traditions, primarily relating to compassion and empathy, love, altruism, and connectedness. And the purpose is to cultivate compassion and joy and equanimity and this sense of love and connection with other people. The source is from this article that I read, Loving Kindness Meditation, A Promising Practice for Reducing Stress and Increasing Empathy. And they actually did a study um, based on practicing loving kindness meditations along with some other types of mindfulness practices, but it was primarily focused on like low back pain, which is kind of funny because you don't necessarily correlate like thinking loving kindness to relieving a physical pain. And perhaps that's not true in all cases, right? It's a spectrum and it depends on how invested you are in this practice and in your particular situation, of course, right? But they found that inviting these feelings of love and kindness into yourself, into the relationships that you have with other people tends to make you feel maybe less pain or focus on that pain less maybe. Um, so I love to incorporate this practice when I am feeling maybe a little down or just need kind of like a little pick me up as well. Um, I find this a very emotionally, um, charged meditation and I find a lot of joy and love that comes from it typically, but that's not always the situation. Of course, everyone's a little different. Everyone's unique to their own emotions and feelings. But anyways, that's, I guess, the primary goal of loving kindness meditation, even though, you know, meditation technically isn't, there isn't a goal necessarily, but for this meditation, there kind of is that goal of sending that love and kindness. And again, it's a practice. So maybe you can't find love and kindness right away to send to yourself or to other people, but it's okay you can keep coming back and revisiting this meditation and seeing how it changes for you each time. So this loving kindness meditation is kind of a combination of mantra and visualization. So you're sending, you're visualizing yourself, you're visualizing other people, and then you're repeating in this specific example, mantras of well wishes to people. You begin maybe sending love and kindness, this feeling that you get when maybe someone is sending you lots of love and you can kind of feel that you're wanting to try and um, create and cultivate the same type of feeling to yourself. Then I'll invite you to extend that love and kindness to someone you love as well. Someone who it's easy to find, cultivate this love and kindness for. It doesn't have to be anyone that's currently here on this physical space. Um, it could be someone who's passed. It could be a pet. It could be a teacher or leader. It's up to you. Then I would like for you to visualize someone that is more of neutral to you, maybe an acquaintance, someone just at the store clerk that you see every now and then, or maybe it's your male person that you don't actually know their name, but you see them fairly regularly, perhaps. And then I'll invite you to think of someone that you have challenges with, 
And this can be challenging because this is not the easiest thing to do as we do tend to have disagreements. We have disagreements for a reason. But if you can, um, if you can look beyond those differences and kind of see the root of us as humans, as beings, and see how we are connected, maybe you can send the, that same love and kindness to your enemy or to a person that you don't necessarily like that much. If you can't think of anyone, that's okay. If this is a challenging experience for you, that's okay. Embrace it. You can even say like, for people that are enemies, you can say, sending well wishes to the best of my ability. And that is a true statement perhaps for you. Um, and that's perfectly fine. It's your practice, right? So then I'll invite you also to send love and kindness to everyone on the world, in the world, um, all beings, and allow you to feel that love and kindness that you're generating and sharing with the world. And then finally, we will return back to yourself and send love and kindness back to you again. And maybe begin to notice how it's different from sending love and kindness to yourself when you first start, and then sending love and kindness in the last stage. See how that differs. Sometimes it's challenging to send loving kindness to yourself, um, especially if we're not in the practice of doing that. So just a few final tips. Again, I kind of may have mentioned on this already, but sending love to yourself may feel weird and awkward and it's okay, just embrace it and see how placing yourself in the last position differs from placing yourself first. Oftentimes, to share true love, we need to have our own self true love. We need to share true love to ourselves um, and share that same kindness to ourselves before we can share that same kindness to other people. Sometimes it's easier for us to share that love and kindness to someone that we love, but more challenging to do that for ourselves. So I challenge you to play around and see how that differs for you. Another tip is you don't need a person to fill each stage and, and that's perfectly fine. So in the time of the guided meditation and you can't think of anyone, that's okay. You can still send love and kindness to something out there or you can just embrace that moment for what it is, become aware that no one came to mind when I or when you were guided into that uh, stage. It's perfectly fine. Another tip is being grateful for each experience. So for each stage, be sure to thank that person for being there, um, showing gratitude for them to show up in your mind and your heart and allow them to send love and kindness to you. Just a few more tips before we dive in um, to the meditation, which will actually be a recording, which I'll share below. Um, so another tip is hands can be at your heart center like in prayer or they could be um, touching over each other right on your chest and feeling your heart beat. This allows like a feeling of openness and honesty when you're saying these things. It's not required but you can play around and see how that feels. And then you can also try smiling during this practice or notice if a smile starts to come to your come to your face naturally while you think of these people or these um, beings or just this experience in general. And if you notice it, begin to notice how you're feeling from that smile. So I invite you to pause throughout this practice and kind of continue noticing each part and how that feels when you're envisioning those people and then sending love and kindness to them. There's also a variety of mantras that can be used in this practice. Um, and you're welcome to replace some of these mantras with something else, something that resonates more with you. But they could typically be like, may you be well, may you be at peace, may you be content, may you be content, may you live at ease, may you be safe. Those are just a few examples. And so for the day four challenge is we will practice a loving kindness meditation here. And I've linked in the PDF 
here, as well as I believe in the email that you will receive or the posting on the social media, we'll have the link to the practice to do. And then I'd also like for you to reflect or journal about a moment when you felt at peace and what that looked like. What were you doing? Were there other people with you? And be as detailed as possible um, describing that experience and just embracing it. When you are done with today's challenge, I would love for you to comment below done. Let me know how you found the loving kindness meditation. If you practiced it before, maybe your favorite parts about it, what worked for you, what didn't, whatever you'd like to share, I'd love to know. So comment down below um, that what, what spoke to you during this challenge activity. All right, thanks everyone. And don't forget, I will comment the video down below or somewhere in here to go ahead and watch that as part of day four challenge activity. Um, so I'll see you tomorrow for day five. Bye.